Hey, what's up, Mavs fans? Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre and post game host on 97.1 The Freak on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Appreciate you joining me here on my latest video. Make sure you like and comment on the video. Definitely give this video a like if you are enjoying it. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports and check out the Inside the Mavs podcast wherever you get your podcast for free episodes dropping every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The Mavericks have reached their halfway point. Of the season at 41 games, they are 24 and 17 through those 41 games. And for a team that has started 23 different lineups so far this year, hasn't practiced since December the 21st, but yet are still a top six team in the Western Conference after finishing five and two on their homestand. Thanks to the heroics of Kyrie Irving and Tim Hardaway Jr., who became the second pair of teammates to score at least 40 points in the same game in franchise history after getting a nice win over the Pelicans with the returns of Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, and C.J. McCollum. This team is in a pretty good spot despite all the injuries that they have dealt with so far this year. Luka Doncic is currently out right now as he's dealing with the ankle sprain, but you saw the return of Derek Live the second and the presence that he made in the game against the Pelicans, especially on the offensive glass. Dante Exum continuing to deal with his plantar fascia sprain. Also, Derrick Jones Jr. missing the game against the Pelicans. But the Mavericks are in a really good spot right now as they get ready to go on the road for a couple of games against the Lakers and the Warriors. But as we sit less than a month away from the NBA trade deadline, can this team still find a way to improve? And how do they go about doing it? A team that we've lamented so far this year needs more frontline help, even with the return of Maxi Kleba that we've seen in the last couple of games and what he's been able to bring, especially on the defensive end. This team has got to get bigger and it's got to get stronger because the dependence on a 19-year-old and Derek, Li Derek Live with the second, while it has been great to see so far, it's still a little terrifying to think that the Mavericks, who are 20 and 10, when Derek Lively plays this year, has to depend on him as much as they do night in and night out. And he's been out in and out of the lineup, of course, dealing with a couple of a couple of left ankle sprains so far this year. So my point I'm getting to is this. The Mavericks have put themselves in a position to be a top six team in the West, seven games above 500, with the amount of variance in their starting lineup. It's still have a chance to improve with not only good health in the returns of Luka Doncic and others, but finding a way at the NBA trade deadline to get better as well. We've heard names like a Kyle Kuzma, maybe a PJ Washington of some sort, but the name that continues to be banted about and floated out there is Pascal Siakam of the Toronto Raptors. You say, Kevin, Mavericks fans may not necessarily feel like the Mavericks will have enough to be able to put a package together to acquire him well there's new reporting when it comes to Siakam and what he may or may not want to do when it comes to the trade deadline Matt Moore is talking about on the Locked on NBA's podcast that Siakam will not give a commitment to any team that trades for him that he will resign with them during the offseason so the teams that we've heard in terms of the Kings and the Pacers the Atlanta Hawks to a certain degree and others know, even the Golden State Warriors, know, at least reportedly, that Siakam is not going to commit to them, even if he's traded to them when it comes to the offseason, which I think could bring the Mavericks in play here. You say, Kevin, how in the world does that bring the Mavericks into play if he's not willing to commit to anyone, no matter who trades him? Let's think about it. The Mavericks have gone down this road not once, but twice in previous years most recently with Kyrie Irving. We say, Kevin, the relationship that Kyrie Irving had with Nico Harrison and Jason Kidd made the circumstances a little bit more unique for the Mavericks to take the risk in trading for him, which I say, yeah, you're right. Kyrie Irving was a depreciated asset coming from Brooklyn. He was not able to get the contract extension that he was looking for and forced his way out of New York to get to Dallas, where the Mavericks were able to take a calculated risk based on what they believe they could do to show Kyrie Irving that the organization would put the infrastructure around him to be able to succeed, but also be the best version of himself, not only as a player, but as a person. And you've seen so far how that's come to fruition for the Mavericks. Him and Luka Doncic making the kind of offensive music together when they've been on the floor together. 
that has been spectacular and Kyrie Irving turning into leader guy, doing all the veteran things, diving on the floor for loose balls, getting steals, leading this team from a scoring perspective. Kyrie Irving has been all of that and then some for this team. That's part of the reason why this team is where they are right now, even with all the adversity they've dealt with so far this year. But even if you take it back several years ago when the Mavericks acquired Christos Porzingis from the New York Knicks, they took a risk on a player who had been dealing with injury, obviously with the knees in terms of the ACL. They traded for him, and before he even stepped foot on the floor, gave him a max contract. It didn't necessarily work out the way that the Mavericks wanted it to, but you saw at times the levels of play between Luka Doncic and Christos Porzingis and how it worked out between the two of them. Ultimately, for Porzingis, injury took a toll, and he was not able to remain here. The Mavericks decided to move on from him. Of course, trading him to the Washington Wizards where they acquired Spencer Dinwiddie, which helped the Mavericks go on to, of course, a Western Conference Finals appearance. So this team isn't afraid to take risk, and the one that you would be taking with Siakam would be interesting. Pascal Siakam went to high school in Louisville, went to God's Academy, where he spent time obviously playing before going on to New Mexico State. So for Siakam, you could take the risk of acquiring him and then reminding him, hey, remember all this? You used to play here. You used to play your high school basketball here. How cool would it be to not only have the opportunity to play with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving for the remainder of the season, but then you get to come back home as a 29-year-old who's already been an NBA champion, a two-time All-NBA selection, a two-time All-Star, a former most improved player in the league, and then to finish out your career in a place that is extremely familiar for you. I feel like there would be certain appeal there if you're Siakam, even if you're looking to get into free agency, which reports are he wants to, no matter where he's traded to, get to free agency and test out the market, which he's earned the right to do based off of the career that he's had and all the work that he's put in and the fact that Toronto Raptors are not going anywhere. And if you're the Raptors in Masai Jury here, do you really want this to happen again where you did not trade Fred Van Vliet and then you let him walk in free agency where he signed a lucrative deal with the Houston Rockets? I don't think the Raptors are willing to do that twice in a row when it came to Van Vliet and now Siakam that you just allowed them to walk for nothing. If you're the Toronto Raptors, you owe it to Scotty Barnes, who you have said that you're willing to build this team around. And obviously with the trades that you've been able to acquire, R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly to be able to get that much more in terms of whether it be draft capital or other players that fit the timeline of what Toronto's doing. And if you're the Mavericks, you have a chance to increase your ceiling in the Western Conference because even if you acquire a Kyle Kuzma, for example, from Washington, while, yes, he's a pretty good scorer that can put the ball on the floor and get you a bucket, defensively, he's going to give it all back on the other end. And I don't know if Kuzma necessarily increases your ceiling if you're the Mavericks. I do know for sure that Pascal Siakam would increase your ceiling. A guy that goes 6'8", 6'9", can score, can rebound, isn't necessarily bad on the defensive end, and at the same time should be fairly comfortable playing with two guys who don't necessarily mind sharing the basketball and Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. And if that is the case, Siakam could thrive here when it comes to his ability to succeed with this basketball team. So if you're Nico Harrison and Mark Cuban, who run this team from a basketball operations standpoint, then you have a chance to be able to have success with Siakam here in Dallas. The question will be, are you willing to take the risk? And I think it is a risk that the Mavericks should take. They've been willing to do it before, and they should be able to do it again and if so that will not only make Mavs fans happy but you look around at the west you would have a trio of Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving and Pascal Siakam to pair along with a young center and Derek Live the second who's emerges this year has been fantastic even as a 19 year old rookie so I think there's a lot of advantage there and if you're looking to move off of a Josh Green or a Jaden Hardy or Tim Hardaway Jr. who has played spectacularly so far this year you may not find a higher trade value, especially for Hardaway Jr. than at this moment, given how good he has been to maybe entice Masai Jury and the Raptors to take the risk of moving on from Pascal Siakam to acquire the likes of Hardaway, who does have a descending contract that would make it more attractive for teams to look at him as a guy that you would want to bring on 
and teams all around the league are always looking for shooting. And Tim Hardaway Jr. definitely provides that. Josh Green, at his best, is a guy that brings a lot of energy to the floor, can knock down open shots from three. And Jaden Hardy is a young scorer who is at the younger point of his career where he still can grow and develop and maybe fit alongside of Scotty Barnes there. So there's different things that you could come up with if you're trying to put a trade package together to get Siakam. All of this to say is that he is worth the risk, Siakam that is, to bring to the Mavericks because if you have a chance to get him into your uniform and possibly make a deep run, then you could possibly be able to handle some things in the Western Conference. It's interesting because you think about the situation that the Toronto Raptors found themselves in when they acquired Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, of course, helped him reach the ceiling of winning an NBA championship. Ultimately, he did not sign there, but they got the ultimate payoff in winning a title. I'm not saying Pascal Siakam's the difference between the Mavericks winning or not winning a title this year, but he does provide you a much better opportunity to compete with some of the best teams in the West to put out some of the best starting lineups in the NBA. I'm talking about the Denver Nuggets. I'm talking about the Los Angeles Clippers. I'm talking about several teams that have opportunities to make deep runs like the Minnesota Timberwolves as well with how good they are defensively. So if you're the Mavericks, scare money, don't make money, and the opportunity to do so, if you're the Adelson family who now owns this team, if you're serious about putting the money behind this organization to make them the best winner possible, you should make the move for Siakam and to do it fairly quickly. And the last thing I'll say on this is this. If you're a team looking to possibly acquire him, Siakam has all the leverage here. Force the Raptors to make a decision on whether or not they're actually going to not trade Siakam and then keep him for a team that's struggling this year and then let him walk for free. I don't think Mass Algeria is willing to take that risk once again. And if he isn't, put your best package out there and dare the Raptors to not trade him. It would be to their detriment, not yours. So we will see what happens with the Mavericks when it comes to the NBA trade deadline that is February the 8th. But for Siakam, the Mavericks, this may be a match made in heaven because he would get to come home and have the opportunity to play with two high-level scorers and, more importantly, be able to help this team maybe reach a ceiling that they were not able to reach previously. All the NBA trade deadline stuff will come to fruition here very soon, <laughs> being less than a month away again you can find me on twitter at kevin gray sports be sure to download and subscribe to the inside the mass podcast wherever you get podcasts for free like and comment on this video as well if you liked it and make sure that you hit the notification bell to know when we go live for other shows as well again my name is kevin gray mavericks pre and post game host for 97 one the freak here on kevin gray sports i'll talk to you later peace